Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be all about luxury products. Now, I'm basically going to be going through some luxury products that I would consider to be worth their hefty price tag, and I'm also going to be talking about some luxury products that I would say to probably avoid because they are not at all worth the price in my opinion. I really hope that this video is gonna be helpful for you guys. Don't forget to let me know what your favorite luxury product is in the comments. And also let me know what luxury product you totally regret buying because I feel like that's always helpful to know. Give this video a big thumbs up and of course subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And let's get into it. So the first product that I wanna talk about is this Giorgio Armani Isa Kill eyeshadow. I wanna say generally that the um, Giorgio Armani Icicle eyeshadows, they're fantastic. They're wonderful, they're beautiful, but I do not think that every single color is worth buying unless there is a specific color that you have completely fallen in love with. This formula is so incredibly similar to the L'Oreal um, Infallible eyeshadows. The only reason I wanted to mention this particular shade, because when I wear the shade, I get so many compliments on my eyeshadows from strangers on the street. It's also such an amazing everyday color. This is the shade number nine, and it is the most stunning, um, very soft pinky champagne shadow. So these shadows are very, very interesting in their texture. It's almost like a hybrid between a cream and a powder. And this one in particular, number nine, is just the most stunning shade to put all over the lid because it just makes your eyes look so glowy. It opens them up. It makes them look more awake. And it's just such a great everyday shade that's really going to complement Basically everybody, every eye color, every skin tone, this looks stunning on you. I love applying this even on the tops of the cheekbones. I think it's a very versatile product. Yesterday I actually wore the shade from 10 in the morning until I believe it was 11 30 at night and it did not move. You do not even need a primer with these. Once they set, they will not budge. So staying on the topic of eyeshadow, the next product that I wanna mention are the Viseart eye palettes. Now it's not even just this one in particular, it's the eye palettes in general. Pigmentation and the quality of the eyeshadows are just really unlike any other eyeshadows that I have. Every single color in all of their palettes just have that quality that you're expecting when you're buying an $100 palette. This is called number 04 Dark Matte. You could really see in the swatches that I do just how great these eyeshadows really are. There's really just nothing bad to say about these eyeshadows. So I definitely got to say they're worth their price tag. Now moving into some Tom Ford territory. This is the Tom Ford Soleil Contouring Compact. This is called the Afternooner. Now I bought this really not knowing what to expect. I sort of took a gamble on it because I hadn't heard too many people talk about this. This palette basically has three different products in here. There's a bronzer, a blush, and a highlighter. So the reason I would say that this product is worth the hype because I just really love the formula of these three powders. I find them to be a little bit more on the sheer side, which some people may not like, but I personally love because I feel like these powders just look extremely natural on the skin. This bronzer, when I apply it, it doesn't even look like powder on my skin. It just looks like I'm naturally bronzed. This blush is the, actually the blush that I'm wearing today and I built it up just a little bit and it just gave such a beautiful flush without it looking like I'm wearing powder. And then this highlighter is stunning. It's a very, very soft, really great everyday highlighter. And I just think you could get a lot of use out of these three powders because you are able to build them up or shear them down. You have that sort of like range of how you could use them, which I think is really nice. This is the highlighter that I'm wearing on tops of my cheekbones today. It is the Kevin O'Quan, the Celestial Powder in the shade Starlight. And I feel like not enough people really talk about the Kevin O'Quan highlighters. Now I would describe these highlighters as sophisticated highlighters. These highlighters do not give you that like really metallic, intense, seen from the heavens type of highlight. These are more suited for every day. These are also really great for more mature skin because there's no chunkiness or glitter to it. This one in particular is stunning. It's a really, really soft rose gold. I feel like this really will work for a very wide variety of skin tones. Their powders are so smooth and creamy and just great quality. And I definitely think these are worth their price tag. Moving on to blushes, Becca blushes are definitely worth their price tag, they are the mineral blushes. These two colors are my personal favorites. This one in, is in the shade Songbird, and this is a really great neutral, more peachy blush. I also absolutely adore Flower Child. It's sort of my go-to pink blush. It has a very, very soft sheen to it, which really makes your cheeks look really nice and healthy and glowy. They have the perfect formula. They're pigmented, but not too pigmented. They blend out beautifully, and you're able to build them up. I just adore them so much and I definitely would recommend them to the fullest. Now another blush formula that I definitely think is worth checking out is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek Swish and Pop Blusher. So this blush compact basically has two different shades in here. There's the outer rim and then the inner rim. It sort of looks like a nipple. <laughs> 
if you ask me, but that's sort of besides the point. I just felt like I had to like say it because I'm sure a lot of you are thinking it. Um, what I really like about this concept is that I do this anyway. I always like to take two different shades of blush and I like to put um, one shade more on my cheekbones and the other shade more on my apples. I think it gives a really beautiful dimensional blush look and it's really nice that there's just a blush that sort of has it already and it, the colors match perfectly and complement each other beautifully. And the formula of these blushes are stunning. They're really able to build them up. They're not too pigmented, but pigmented enough. It's really just the perfect blush formula. Now, I have quite a few lip products to talk about. Surprise, surprise, we all know Jamie loves her lip products. You guys know I was gonna talk about this. Let's be real, if you've been following my channel for a while, then you know that I am sort of in love with the Marc Jacobs glosses, and these two in particular are my favorite shades. The reason why I think these are definitely worth their price tag is just because I feel like they're the perfect gloss. They are incredibly glossy. They give you such a nice, beautiful, plump look to your lips. Like, I feel like glosses like this that just have this type of glossiness to it just make your lips look huge. I also really like the consistency of them. They are not sticky whatsoever. They feel very smooth and almost buttery on the lips and they also have a really pleasant minty sensation to them. So these two shades are my two favorites that I want to recommend. The first one over here is Sugar Sugar. It's just a perfect neutral nude and has a little bit of gold shimmer in here which is just so pretty on the lips. The shimmer though is not chunky and if you want something that's a little bit of a darker nude or you feel like that's a little bit too nude for you then I would recommend Pretty Things. This is a beautiful very warm nude. This is another very versatile color that you could wear on top of a ton of different nude lipsticks or even by itself. Moving on to a YSL lipstick. I want to really just talk about this color in particular just because I haven't really tried many of the other YSL colors. Let me know in the comments if you guys have and if you have any recommendations because I would love to know because I love this one so much. This is in the shade number 10 and this is probably one of my new favorite pinky nude lipsticks. It's just the right tone. It's not too light that it completely washes you well but it's light enough that it gives you that very like plump look. The formula is also so creamy, very hydrating, very comfortable, and I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for an amazing pinky nude. Next, I want to talk about the NARS Audacious Lipsticks. Now, I don't have particular color recommendations just because I love every single color. I sort of just want to recommend the formula in general. I bought so many colors after discovering my first one because they are just such gorgeous lipsticks. They're very very pigmented. You get one swipe with a full color opacity. Probably what I would consider to be like the perfect lipstick. And I would definitely recommend like all of them. All of them. Now the last lip product that I would have to recommend are the Tom Ford lipsticks. I actually did a whole review all on the Tom Ford lipsticks, so I'm not going to talk too much about them. I could link that in the description box down below. There's something about the lipsticks that just make your lips look incredible. Um, in particular, the shade Blush Nude is my personal favorite. However, I lost it for the second time. I do not know where it is, which makes me really, really sad. So this one over here is another one of my favorites, which I'm Gonna show you guys, this is called First Time. This is one of his matte formulas. The matte formulas are really pretty because they're not overly matte and they're still very comfortable on the lips. So if you like a matte lipstick, but you don't like a flat matte and you like it when it's a little bit more comfortable than the Tom Ford mattes are just beautiful, but the creams are my favorites. All right, so next I wanna talk about these Cover FX. These are the Custom Enhancer Drops. I think these are probably some of the best liquid highlighters on the market. They are so stunning and so versatile that I think they're 100% worth their price tag just because of how versatile they really are. You could either mix them in with your foundation, with a primer, you could apply them by themselves, you could apply them as eyeshadow. There's really so much that you could do with the highlighters. I really feel like they give you that intense glow if you're looking for it, or you could really play it down and sort of layer it underneath your foundation. If you want something that gives you a little bit more of like a glow from within, you can get that with these two. I also wanted to mention the bronzer ones. Um, this is in the shade Sunlight. I'm actually wearing it today on my face as my bronzer. It gives me a really natural looking bronze look because it is a liquid. It doesn't look like it's just sitting on top of my skin. It really looks like it's a part of it. Now the last product that I wanna say is definitely worth the price tag is this Marc Jacobs Contour Palette in the shade Mirage Filter. So this is a little duo over here that has a contour powder as well as a little banana powder. I think that this is probably one of the best contour palettes. I use it all the time. I just love the shades in here. This contour shade is just perfect. It's not too cool tone that it looks gray, but it's also not too warm. And this banana shade is just beautiful. It really does brighten up underneath the eyes. And these powders are just very, very 
very fine and they really just sit on the skin so beautifully and you get a lot of product in here the compact is beautiful and I definitely think it's worth checking out now let's talk about a few products that I have here that I do not think are worth their price tag so the first product that I do not think is worth its price tag is a Charlotte Tilbury luxury palette in the shade the vintage vamp now I bought this originally because I just love the colors in here and I still love the colors in here the eyeshadows in here are just not up to my standards. I personally feel like Makeup Geek eyeshadows are better. I think Anastasia eyeshadows are better. These eyeshadows just did not do them for me. They were difficult to blend. They were a little bit chalky and they just weren't that great. And this is a very expensive palette. I don't think it's worth it. Um, and I would say to pass on these. Another palette that I would say is not worth its price tag is this YSL mascara. It's not like this mascara doesn't make my lashes look good because it makes my lashes look fine. The one thing that I cannot stand about this product is the scent. It smells so strongly of roses and it really irritated my eyes when I use this. And I can only imagine if you have sensitive eyes or even if you're sensitive to scents, there's no way you could possibly use this. I just don't think it's worth the price. It doesn't even make my lashes look that great. I think there are other mascaras, drugstore mascaras that just work so much better and don't have that really intense rose floral scent that I just think is really off-putting to put on your eyeballs. Like why would I want rose scented lashes? Why? Why? Another product that I would have to say is definitely not worth the money. I don't know. I can't get into this product. I really tried really hard. This is the Bobbi Brown New Nude Finish Illuminating Powder in Nude. Now, somebody at Sephora actually recommended this to me. and It sounded great, and she really, really loved it. So that just goes to show you that you may love this product, but I personally don't think it's really worth the price tag. It's basically like a mosaic of different nude powders in here and then there's this really 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 almost glittery um, shade here and there's also a glittery shade here so if you try to set your whole face with this you will just end up with glitter all over your face no and I just don't love the powder. I don't think it sits very nicely on the skin. You could really see it. And I would say that this is not worth its price, unfortunately. This is another Charlotte Tilbury product that I really don't think is worth the price. This is a skincare product. It is the Magic Cream. I really, really thought it would be magical for my skin. At first, I liked it sort of to use as like a primer, like before my makeup, but then I realized that I have so many other moisturizers that literally do the exact same thing that are not so extravagant in its price. So guys, that concludes all of my luxury products that are worth their price and that aren't worth their price. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Of course, give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be all about brushes. I basically put together